So this is part two of the latest piece I'm working on, and that piece is a very small side table. Um, this piece is actually going to the customer that ordered the um, oak dining table that I was fixing a couple weeks ago. So the style of it, the color of it, everything is matching that other piece. Now, um, this doesn't have finish on it yet and that's not going to make it into the video because I've learned the hard way with water locks that if you try and put water locks on the stain before it's fully dry it, it lifts the stain so even the 72 hours they recommend on the can sometimes isn't enough especially because we've got another cold snap around where I live so this probably won't be finished for another week and a half so you could tell the drawer front, since it's recycled, still has the water locks finish on it. So you could see the contrast, but essentially this is what it's going to look like. Um, this water locks is a little bit of overkill for a piece like this. I like the way it looks, but you don't have to put something that durable on a small table like this. The reason this is getting water locks is like I said, so it matches the table, which has that on it. And even though clear coats are somewhat similar, they will, um, some differences will arise in the hue and the sheen um, across the spectrum of brands. But basically this is a pretty short video. This is one of those builds that I probably could have squeezed into one, but it was a little too long. So I made it a two part series. And um, most of this is gonna detail working on the drawer. It has bottom mount slides on it because I like them. And because um, since this is the same customer that had the problem with the warping tabletop, you can make these so they slide on wooden drawer slides, which I've done, but um, they do sometimes have a tendency to stick and I didn't wanna deal with any more sort of wood humidity, sliding, sticking issues, especially with the same customer. So that's why I chose that. So before gluing this together, I had to taper the legs and I chose to do this with my radial arm saw and an angle uh, cut off piece of plywood that I'm using as a fence. This is admittedly not the most efficient or the safest way to do this, but I never got around to making a tapering jig for the table saw. It's kind of on my long-term to-do list. So for now, this is usually how I do it. You could see I could cut one of the inside tapers, move the fence to the other side, flip the boards, and do the other one as well. I always mark these before I cut them because it's very easy to cut the taper on the wrong side. So then once everything's dry fit, I could pop all the pieces apart and glue this whole thing together. So the important part of this is obviously with most furniture is getting everything square because these are inset uh, drawers going into the piece. You definitely want that uh, front face frame to be pretty square. Otherwise you're gonna have to do some finagling when it comes time to install the drawer. So then for the drawers, I usually use three quarter inch plywood with, I believe they're the 563F uh, bloom under mount drawer slides. But for this one, I didn't want to use plywood and I was only making one drawer. So I decided to go um, through the trouble of hand cutting the dovetails, which is something I'm consistently trying to get better at. And this was a good excuse to do it. So I actually ordered the 563Hs, I believe, and I might have the numbering wrong in order to use five eighths of an inch uh, pieces that go in there instead of three quarter. So I took some of those old table parts you saw earlier, I, I ripped them down so I had five eighths of an inch material and then I could go through doing the dovetails. Now I am no expert dovetail cutter. I still get gaps and, and whatnot in my dovetails. So I'm going through this very quickly. Um, my camera was about to die so i'm tethered to the wall with an a cord right now which is why the view is not great but you could see i'm doing it in pieces and then and then showing the view of the camera it's pretty self-explanatory i go through and mark all of the parts cut them out cut out the excess with a coping saw and then i chisel to my lines i do that for for all the parts you could see i chisel through halfway on one piece and then I'll flip it over and chisel through on the other side so that I don't get any tear out. Now the nice part about this is since this is the, the and then I could go through and transfer those marks onto the, the front piece and then pretty much do the exact same process just with a different angle. 
Like I said, I'm definitely not a dovetail expert, but since I was only making one drawer, um, I do like to practice and, and that was a great time to do it. If I'm making like eight or 10 plywood carcass drawers, I definitely, definitely would set up the jig I have for this. And then that's what that looks like. And then, like I said, the nice thing about this is one side of this is already finished because it's that recycled material. And then I could go through and also remove the excess the exact same way. These are through dovetails. The last time I filmed this, I believe they were half blinds. Um, and I'm making a drawer box and then I'm putting a false front on top of it. The reasoning for that is because I'm using undermount drawer slides, like I mentioned in the intro. So you can't really have um, an inset door flush with your face frame doing that. So the false front's a little bit bigger than this actual drawer box. You can see once I get a, a fairly decent fit, everything's ready to go. Like I said, they're not terrible. I'm not great at it. You can see there is some some gaps and, and, and stuff like that. But especially on something like this that will get a darker stain, once you glue it and, and fill some of those voids with epoxy, you'll, you'll never even notice. Then I go through and add the dado on my pieces, which will accept the bottom. Since I'm using undermount drawer slides, this has to be a half inch up from, from the bottom. And then I could go through and put, I could go through and measure for that inset, which is just some um, birch veneer ply quarter inch and fit that into place and then cut for the back. So I make sure the whole box is square and then I can cut for the back. Now my backer doesn't go all the way to the bottom, which means I don't have to cut out the insert in the back of these drawers in order to use those slides. So then to add the shelving on this, I went through and attached just some pieces of some uh, oak. That same plywood I'm using for the base, so the oak is this, the thickness I needed so that that base would, would ride with the front of the face frame. Now I'm gluing these to the long grain of that front face, not to the legs, because the legs are gonna move a little differently than the long grain and I don't want these to tear. Um, there's different ways to do this. This was the easiest way to do it for my application. So I could just put those shelves in. You won't see these on the piece. As you can see, I did it for both. You technically don't need a shelf underneath that top drawer, but I like to do it just to make the piece look a little more finished. Now I had to remove that top set set of um, shims there. It was a little bit of an oversight in order to fit the bottom panel in. But once I got the bottom panel in, I could fit the top. I had to notch out the backs just so that they fit around the legs. But that's how I added the panels. This is the drawer dry fit into place. Um, this is the front. I cut it at the same time I did the sides. It's 5 eighths of an inch thick. And then this glued up pretty square so I really didn't have to do any sort of finagling on that false front. I just cut it to the reveal I wanted and it fit in place. So once I had all that dry fit I could glue the drawer box together um, and put my glue bottle right in the camera view. Once the drawer is square I could flip it over and um, nail in that backer and then that will hold everything in place as it dries. As you can see it just looks incremental adjustments in order to get that square and then I could just brad that into place. So I had to shim out the inside of this in order to attach those runners. You could see those shims there. Pretty self-explanatory because these are only nine inch runners. They don't have the, the screw in holes at the bottom of the, the, the runners. And then once those are in, I could drive, uh, drive it. I could put this in place. Now they sell a jig in order to cut out the, the little hole in the back. What I do, as you can see right there, I had the drawer sides in place. I just kind of push this against the back. It will leave a little indent. I could drill the holes I need to and then attach it. So I'm using pennies to get my reveal. That's kind of my new me method versus playing cards. And then since the top's off on this, this is the easiest way to do this. I could hold it in place, um, countersink a couple screws into the back side, and then that's how I hold that, that um, piece on the, on the front. I don't glue these anymore because I've had issues with, with wood movement, so they're just screwed in place. And then that is the drawer front. You can see those are soft closed, closed slides. And then for the stain, um, on brand for this channel, my camera does die out while I'm staining this, but this is the same color stain um, as the table I made for the same customer. 
So oak takes stain really well. I didn't uh, put any sort of pre-stain on this or anything like that. Just sanded it nicely and then and then stained it. So once again, wooden knob going on the front. And if you have a false front, it's usually too thick for the hardware that they provide you with. So I had to countersink in order to get that screw in place. And, and that is what that looks like. I use figure eights to attach the top, which is kind of my go-to. And then there's a bunch of extremely blurry, fuzzy photos. But this was the end of a day on a Friday, and I wasn't going to retake these after I saw how blurry they were. So once this is delivered, I'll try and get some, some better thumbnails.